Today I got this comment, and thanks to the other two of you who commented. But the important thing is this, I'll read it out. Hi, I saw some of your videos, thought you knew what you were doing, thanks, and wondering if the Bamboo Lab P1S works with Blender models. Normally I would just reply to this as is, but I figured I would respond to this in more detail. So to understand whether or not you should use Blender for 3D printing, let's talk about what people normally choose to use for 3D printing, which is a CAD software. So an important distinction between Blender and something like what I have on the right here, which is Fusion 360, is that in Blender, you are modifying the vertices, you're modifying the edges, and you're modifying the faces of your model. In something like Fusion 360, you can almost think about it like code, where you're actually setting up the parameters of a function to create your final model. Now, what I mean by that is I have a model that I've made here. And as you can see, it looks pretty simple, but the important thing is that if you go in and you change a parameter here, for example, I have a parameter to define the, uh, the, the thickness of this gap right here for if a desk was to go here. If I go here and I say that this is instead going to be, let's say 80, let's make that 80. The model is going to adjust to do that. And as you can see, there's some fillets and some chamfers that have been applied to this model that retain their function after I've modeled, uh, or sorry, after I've changed that parameter. This is what a parametric model is. And this is what's really powerful about these CAD softwares is that they are parametric. You have no control over the topology, but you have control over the steps that lead up to your final product. So to kind of illustrate that a little bit simpler, let's make this cube in Fusion 360. Let's create it on this face. Let's go and make a center point rectangle so that we can go in the origin and say it's going to be 20 by 20. Now what I just did is I defined some dimensions for how big this square is going to be. And similarly to if you made a plane in Blender and then extruded it, we've made a plane and we are extruding it. There we go. It's practically the same thing. Now, like I said, Fusion 360 is made so that you can repeat steps that you've done earlier, or sorry, that you can uh, modify earlier steps and still retain future steps so that if you wanna go back and change something about your model, you can do so very easily. And that's visible on this timeline. These CAD softwares are known for their timelines where you can go in and you can change an early step and kind of like the butterfly effect, you can affect the rest of the way that your model is made. So let's apply, uh, here, let's not select that, let's go out. Let's apply a chamfer to this edge, five. Let's apply a fillet to this edge, 10. Let's, whoa, that's a cool shape. Maybe not so much. Uh, let's do five as well. Five, that's a little bit better. And then let's like uh, extrude this face. So you can see that this is kind of a weird shape. It doesn't really serve any purpose, but the important thing is that we can go on this timeline and see all of our steps. That is massive. That is extremely useful for if you are making something that needs to fit a specific shape if you're like, oh no, my model is just a little bit too small in this area, but I don't wanna mess with any of the other things that I did, let me just change this dimension. That is absolutely amazing for that purpose. And so what we can do is we can go back to our original sketch. Remember how it was 20 by 20? Let's make it like something random, 45 by 15. And let's hit finish sketch. And then you can see we got no warnings down here, so we did our homework and everything kind of works how it should. Let's go forward in time. There's our rectangle. There's our chamfer. There's our fillet. There's our random extrusion. And you can see it followed the same steps to get to this final model, even though I changed the original condition. So enough about Fusion 360. Let's talk about Blender. If you were to do the same model in Blender, it's pretty easy. It's really fast. You hit uh, edge mode, it, we're in edit mode. Let's control B, we're gonna reduce the vertices to just one. We've got a chamfer, wonderful. Select these edges, bevel, let's give it uh, some more geometry. We've got uh, a, a fillet. Let's extrude this face outward, we've got our face. So these are two very random models. But the thing is, is that if I wanted to go in and say, change how many of these uh, these vertices that I gave to this, or sorry, uh, faces that I gave to this bevel, there's no timeline, there's no steps for me to go do that. So that's where Blender loses out on some of its editability of, of a 3D print or a 3D model uh, over something like Fusion 360. But that's not the only thing that is unoptimized about Blender for 3D printing. 
if I wanted to do something really crazy to this model, if I wanted to chamfer this face and do an insane value, whoa, look at that. Whoa, it's stopping me. It's stopping me right as I'm about to get here because it's telling me that at this point, I start to generate geometry that it can't compute to make manifold. And when I say manifold, I mean a model being manifold is a model that you could fill with water and nothing would fall out. There would be no holes, no gaps, no, uh, no flat faces with no depth. Uh, it, would be, uh, it would be solid. And if we try to do something like this, okay, maybe a little bit, there we go, it's fine, but then anything more than like this and it breaks. And this is a huge, huge advantage that Fusion 360 has. It's that it will stop you from creating geometry that does not work for 3D printing or additive manufacturing. Blender, of course, does not have this, uh, this feature because if you go in here and then you say you wanna bevel uh, like these guys, whoa, that's pretty crazy. And Blender will do nothing to stop you from, from, uh, from doing that as, as crazy as it looks. And you know, that may not seem important because, oh, I would catch that, but I will tell you as someone who's tried to do a lot of 3D modeling in Blender and just throughout my own workflow, whether it be for 3D printing or not, there will be times where I will I will have two things. I'll say, oh, I can bevel that. And then I won't notice little tiny errors like this. And it may not seem significant and it probably isn't, but the point is, is that it's not optimized for 3D printing. Now, I've trashed on Blender a lot for 3D printing. Let's talk about some of the ways that it's actually a good thing for 3D printing. Because you have so much control over the topology, you can make anything you want very quickly. I don't know that I could just go in here and select like a random edge of this bevel right here and just extrude it and then make it smaller. And then, I don't know, rotate it. I don't know that I could bevel this and then uh, or sorry, chamfer this, or yeah, let's make it a chamfer and then inset it and then extrude it. Like the, 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 the ability to make something so quickly to a form that you want in Blender is really, really nice. And if you are being careful about your topology and about those little areas where your model might, uh, might become uh, um, non-manifold, it's amazing. It's incredible what you can do. For example, uh, a big thing about Blender is not just the modeling, it's the sculpting. You can see this is a model that I made in Blender. This is a model of a Bile Titan from Helldivers 2. And this kind of geometry is extremely hard to get this organic and this kind of quickly made in something like Fusion 360. So my point is, there are a lot of ways that Fusion 360, or sorry, that Blender is not optimized for 3D printing. But as long as you're careful, it can be just as powerful in ways that Fusion 360 is not. Like if you wanted to sculpt this into a, a very unique form that that is, is completely based on how you modify the topology, you can do that. You can give it a face. Like let's say this guy's got a face and he goes like this. I mean, it looks, it looks pretty silly, but the point is that took me three seconds. I mean, making an organic shape like that would be tremendously hard in Fusion 360. It's just not optimized for it. So to answer your question in a much shorter version, yes, you can use Blender to 3D print things. There are even tools built into Blender to do so. There's even a little uh, add-on that you can install naturally from the add-on menu that will help you clean up your model. And you can see I, I did my homework and it's, it's already manifold, but if it wasn't manifold, it would do its best to make your model manifold. You can remesh it. You can do a lot of things to actually make it work for 3D printing. And if you are careful and if you know what you're doing, you can leverage Blender to make some really incredible models in not a lot of time. But if you're trying to make models that are parametric, fit for a specific product, fit for a specific purpose, Fusion 360, Onshape, SolidWorks, these are all softwares where that might be a little bit easier. So I hope that answered your question. I hope that if you were just interested in the differences between these two softwares that you learned something. And as always, let me know what you guys think.